it's easy to put people into categories and have our ideas about them become really rigid and unmoving. My work is interested in dispelling this essentialist perspective that suggests that people are intrinsically one thing or another, be it their class, sex, or even like whether they're deemed normal or abnormal. I've recently finished a body of work that has taken me a few years to complete, which I've called Amalgamations. And these drawings, which are made using graphite pencils on drafting film, explores the body in constant transition and suggests that they are capable of containing a multitude of experiences and identities. In society, there are clear standards of what's considered beautiful and ugly, healthy and ill, male and female, and this binary way of thinking creates a hierarchy of what is and is not valued, and it deems certain things normal and other things abnormal. And in turn, it creates this us versus them mentality that creates conflict. In this series, the images are found on the internet, from magazines and books, and they're used to create drawings that bring seemingly contradictory elements together to question the way that we define and value constructed identities. An image brought from an ad for eyelash extensions can coexist in the same compositional plane as an eye in the middle of surgery. Male and female bodies can float together in the same singular mass. And by placing these binaries in such close proximity, the work exemplifies how our bodies can be lots of things all at once. These ideas of how the body can be fluid and contain a multitude of identities and experiences is an important factor in my new work, which explores my own identity as someone who is both Chinese and American, and not feel oftentimes Chinese enough or American enough, and ultimately not feeling a sense of belonging. But one of the best things about starting a new body of work is the experimentation phase. Not only am I exploring new territories in terms of ideas, but also in terms of materials and processes. There's been a learning curve. I've had to learn how to prepare canvases for pastel drawings, and I've learned how to use pastels. I've never used color in my previous work before. I'm also learning how to carve foam for three-dimensional there is a lot of failure and not knowing and a lot of uncertainty, but I think that's where I thrive and it enables me to grow as an artist whenever I'm outside of my own comfort zone. Whenever I begin a new body of work, it's always a back and forth between making the work, understanding new materials, and doing research. It's important for me to continue to understand how my experiences exist in a larger framework. So I've been reading a lot of texts from Asian American authors. Asian Americans are stuck in this in-between state. We are foreign and familiar and this idea of being vaguely exotic, but safe enough for white America is perfectly exemplified in the architectural vernacular of America's Chinatowns. As a kid growing up in LA, I remember visiting Chinatown every weekend and being amazed by how magical it felt. It felt like I was being transported back to China 
but in fact, Chinatowns were designed by architects that had never been to China and used photographs of religious temples as examples of how to create these cities. The resulting architectural collages were drawn from various Chinese traditions and American ideas of what China should look like. So in the end, these places aren't exactly Chinese or American, but they're a representation of Chinese American history. So I've been incorporating some of the architectural features that I remember as a kid into these new works. My work is in constant conversation with these ideas that I'm grappling with. I never really know exactly what the end result of my work will be. The process of making is organic and influenced by what I read and see. So the pieces are actually a documentation of me working through ideas and concerns. And I'm using drawing, which is slow and methodical as a means to process these thoughts and to better understand my particular place in these current times. I have one drawing that is pretty close to being complete. The images are sourced from photographs that I've taken of myself and a cover from the May 2020 issue of the CDC's Emerging Infection Disease Journal. The image from the journal is of an 18th century Qing Dynasty textile. This relationship between this image and the Infectious Disease Journal perpetuates this idea of a China virus and fuels an ongoing wave of anti-Asian sentiment. And in this drawing, I point to this textile, a gesture that positions me both as an insider and outsider. The figure, which is me, stares directly at the viewer, inviting the viewer to admire this textile, while at the same time, the gesture can be read as finger pointing, warning the viewer of foreignness and potential danger. It is both these lines that I find myself straddling when I'm thinking of my own identity and the weight of my racialized body in our current times. I am revisiting the histories of my family while thinking about how my body is in conversation with this history and navigating my own sense of place to create pieces that are not only about displacement, but also about joy and belonging. To create a portrait of myself that isn't one noted, but is humanizing.